So to use PowerShell to create a file sync with Azure, the first thing we'll need to do is to disable Internet Explorer's enhanced security configuration. And this is the code to do it here. I'm just going to be setting a couple of registry keys. And then you need to restart the Explorer process. I'm not going to do that right now because it screws up the recording. But this is necessary during the initial registration process. So you can turn it back on after. It's not a permanent requirement. It's just during the setup. But the first thing we need to do is to create a file share in Azure to use to sync to. Uh, so you can see here, I've got the resource group I'll be using as well as my storage account name. I'm going to assign those to a couple of variables. And then I'm getting that storage account using the get Azure ARM storage account commandlet and assigning it to the storage account variable. And then as well, I'm getting the key from that storage account using the get Azure ARM storage account key. But you notice that here at the end of it, I am passing it to the select object commandlet to select just the first key as well as looking at the value property of that key. I'm going to assign that to the storage key variable. And then I'm also getting the storage context now that I've got that key. I'm getting the storage context so that I can create a share using the new Azure storage share commandlet. You can see here that I'm giving it the name ip switch file share. And also storing that in the share variable. That way I can use it here in just a minute. And so the next thing we'll need to do on your server is to make sure that you've got the file sync agent installed. So here's the download URL for it. And you can use Invoke Web Request to download that. And depending on the speed of your internet connection, it may take a couple minutes. And then once it's downloaded, you can use the Invoke Item commandlet to actually run the executable. And when you install it, you can go ahead and just accept the defaults. There's nothing special to the configuration. Just make sure you know what directory you install it to. I'm not going to install it now because installing it requires me to close all my PowerShell sessions. And I've already I've got the Azure session open that I don't want to close. So once we've got that downloaded, and you can see here, this is the default path it, ins it installs it to, program file slash Azure slash storage sync agent. And I'm going to assign that to the agent path variable. And as well, I'm, I'm assigning the region that I'm using to the region variable. And this needs to be the same region as a storage account. And the resource group that I'm going to create the file sync in, that's what I've got right here. And as well as the name that I want to give the storage sync. So I'm going to call that tech snips storage sync and assign that to the storage sync variable. Uh, and then I will need to import the module that was installed with that agent. So you can see here I'm using the agent path slash and then the name of that module here. So I can go ahead and import it. And you see we get, we get a little notification here that it says has some unapproved verbs. Not a problem. So first we need to get these our subscription using the get Azure ARM subscription. And of course, specifying our subscription name. This is going to give us some metadata we, we're going to need here. Specifically for line 51, login Azure ARM storage sync, I need that subscription ID. So you can see I'm specifying that there. I'm also specifying the resource group, uh, the tenant ID, which came out of that subscription again, and as, as well as the region uh, that I'm using. And so I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And then once I'm logged in, we just need to create a new storage sync service using the new Azure RM storage sync service commandlet and giving it the name that we specified earlier. Now oh, it looks like we already have a storage sync with that name. So I'm going to give it a new name here. And so then we can go ahead and create it with a name that doesn't exist. All right. So once you're able to create the storage sync service with a name that doesn't exist, this is the output you get. So you can see I renamed it to TS store sync. And so the next step we need to do is we need to get the server that we're on registered. So I'm going to use just the register Azure ARM storage sync server commandlet. And these, these are commands that are coming out of that module that we imported. And then of course, specifying that same storage sync name that we had before so that it gets registered to the right sync service. I'm going to store that output into the registered server variable so I can reference it here further down the script. And it, it may take a minute or two to, for the server to get registered. But once it does, the next thing we'll do is to create the sync group. And so I'm going to call this sync group TechSnips sync group. I'm going to use the new Azure RM storage sync group command to create a new group with that name and specifying the storage sync service as well. And so there you can see we've got our sync group created. And the second to last thing we'll need to do is create the cloud endpoint. And to do that, we're using the new Azure RM storage sync cloud endpoint commandlet. 
And the parameters here, we need the name of our sync service. So that's what we created earlier, the name of our sync group, as well as the storage account resource ID, which comes out of that storage account variable from when we created the storage account and the storage account share name. So you can see this is the name of that file share that we created. So if switch file share. And once we create this cloud endpoint, you can see we're looking for a provisioning state of succeeded. And so once we have our cloud endpoint, the last thing we need is the server endpoint. So our local server to actually connect to that cloud endpoint. And so you can see here, I'm going to use the new Azure ARM storage sync server endpoint commandlet with a few parameters here. So I've got the storage sync service name. So the same storage sync service from before, the same sync root name. And I'm also using that registered server uh, variable from when we registered the server to get the ID out of that. And as long as the storage sync service name and the sync group name are the same, this will be able to sync to that cloud endpoint. And you can also see that this is the point at which I specify the path uh, that I'll be syncing. So you can see my local path here is on my E drive on a folder called file sync demo. So we'll create that local endpoint. And again, this may take a minute to run. And then again, on this output, we're looking for a provisioning state of succeeded. And so now if we look at our file system and go to the E drive here, notice I've got a file sync demo and this is currently empty. And so now I've gone back over to the Azure portal and you can see here that I've got that file share. So I'm inside of the resource group where I created it, looking at that storage account. And if I look at my file share, uh, you can see that I don't have anything in it. I mean, besides the, the uh, default system share information directory. And so what I can do is I can flip back over to my server here and we can actually create a new file here. And what we should see if we go back over to our file share in the portal, we can do a refresh and there that file shows up. So that's how you sync a local file share to Azure using PowerShell. Thanks for watching.